Ladies and gentlemen, today is an exciting day. I'm revisiting a project I built a while back. You may have seen the video, you may have not. If not, I'll leave it in the upper right for you to check out. Basically what I did is I made a pair of all steel leaf spring stilts, or jump stilts. Some of you may have seen them, they're available commercially, and they look like a lot of fun. Now, I thought about building my own, and so I gave it a try, but my design was a little flawed. And this is now my updated and upgraded version, thanks to some comments that you guys left on that video. Now, I went ahead and built these off camera, but there's a very detailed explanation in that other video of how I built all of this assembly and the reasoning behind the dimensions and measurements that I think you'll find important if you're interested in making a pair for yourself. Now, my reasoning behind building these is that they look like a lot of fun, but to buy them, they were very expensive. The cheapest pair of jump stilts that I could find on Amazon were about 280 bucks. Now, I built these for a little under 100, and in operating principle, they're basically the same. These upgraded versions have a fiberglass leaf spring, which is a huge plus compared to the other version. And basically all the geometry is the same. The only differences are some mechanical uh, differences and also these are made out of steel and not aluminum, so they are quite a bit heavier. The ones you can buy, they have at around 10 pounds each and these are a little over 15 each, about 15 and a half. So these were a whole lot of fun to build and so naturally I thought I would share it with you guys if you're interested and to see just what upgrades could be done if any of you built uh, my previous pair. But let's just say there was a lot of room for improvement and that's what I'm going to be going over next. All right, I know it's a little windy so the audio might not be great, but hopefully you guys can still understand what I'm saying and I'll add some subtitles if I need to. But next thing I'm going to do is give you a detailed overview, take all this apart and show you each individual piece and what parts I use to build each one. And as I do that, I'll go over the upgrades from the last pair if you happen to have watched that video. All right, now the first main difference that I'm really going to highlight is the fact that I upgraded from these steel leaf springs in the old set of stilts to some fiberglass leaf springs. And this is typically what the commercial versions use, as I stated, but these are not from a commercial version. I, <laughs> I actually learned something really interesting in the comment section of the last video in that certain vehicles like GMC Safaris, Chevy Astro vans, and some Corvettes actually used fiberglass leaf springs uh, as a production vehicle. And so I went down to my used parts guy and I said, hey, can you find me a spring off of a 90s Astro van? And he got me one. It wasn't even that difficult. These are quite readily available. And obviously this is quite a bit thicker and these only have one spring per spring pack on either side of the vehicle, which means that they're a lot stronger than the individual metal springs that I was using, not only because of their material, but because they are thicker and made to handle more weight by virtue of what they are. Hold on, I'm being interrupted. So using fiberglass leaf springs presents a different set of issues in that we need a way to fix this to the rest of our, our unit, our spring still pieces here. And so the way I chose to do that was with simple clamps. And one interesting thing to note is that obviously this fiberglass is not going to be nearly as durable as a steel leaf spring would be. And so I had to come up with a way to hold it gently, but also firm enough that obviously it's not going to slip out. And so what I chose to do was actually create these clamps. And this is just two inch by eighth inch flat bar. And I took a piece of, I believe it's quarter inch water pipe, drill out the center to exactly three eighths of an inch, which is already pretty, pretty close to anyway. And then I put it down in this crook, welded it in place. And that's my pivot point, which connects to this bracket here, which is just a piece made from one inch uh, by three sixteenths inch flat bar. And so that's the hinge that the back of our spring pivots on because it's important to have a pivot point here. To attach it, I drilled three holes on either side of the plates, as you can see, and then I drilled corresponding holes in the fiberglass and in between the steel and the fiberglass to protect it from wear. I put just a little piece of butyl rubber that I cut out from some uh, inner tube. It gives a nice protective coating and it keeps things from breaking or cracking. So that's very, very important. Now, down towards the other end. Now, I would really encourage you to go watch that other video but in that video, I explained that jump stilts have a pivot point somewhere right about here. And uh, some of the relationships between those things were explained in that video as well. So check it out if you'd like more information. But with these, I couldn't just bolt a pivot point straight to this part of the spring because, well, it wouldn't hold up. Putting two holes through there, this isn't quite as rigid as steel would be or as forgiving in that sense. So I had to come up with a way to support a pivot point without actually damaging the spring. And so the way I chose to do that was the way that you might see it on a commercially available stilt. And there are these leg covers that I made. And these are just a piece of two inch by eighth inch square tubing that I cut in half and then cut little pizza cuts out of all the way down to get a nice curve to match the curve of the spring. Then I've got bracing in between and some two inch by eighth inch flat bar there, there, and not down here. Down here is a little bit of a different story. Since we need a cup for our fiberglass leaf spring to fit into, I took a piece of one by one inch square tubing, 
and then cut it at the opposing corners so I could create this L shape. So imagine if it was like an L shape like this, I dropped it into the two inch by, well now one inch by two inch square tubing and then welded it in place and that gave me a nice cut. But of course, I didn't want the bottom of the fiberglass leaf spring riding on straight steel because that's where all the weight of me impacting the ground is going to hit. And so what I did is I took a piece of rock crusher conveyor belt or just any thick rubber will work and I stuck it down in the bottom just to give it some give so that when this hits the ground and that leaf spring is driven down into it, it doesn't crack or splinter the end. That's a very important step. And then moving on from that, there are just uh, steel framed feet. And the way I did that was just with a piece of one and a quarter inch tubing that I cut in half and then a piece of one and a quarter inch water pipe because they're measured in different dimensions. They're gonna be different sizes, but I took half of that and then I created this curve back here. So it's very, very simple, but I think it turned out pretty well. And then there's a piece of two inch flat bar there that connects this point and this point. And of course those seams are welded, ground smooth, and everything looks all pretty and shiny. And uh, one great benefit is that these feet are way more durable than the last ones because these are what I was working with last time. I had to connect them at the bottom, of course, and there just there wasn't much surface area. There was no grip. They, they were terrible. <laughs> they really were. So what I did is I took some bike tire, I cut the outer tread out of it, and then bolted it on to my metal feet on the bottom. This gives me some really aggressive grip, and I give it a plenty of screws to hopefully keep it from moving around or tearing while I'm using them. And so far I've used these quite a bit and I've had no issues. Anyway, so the, I obviously had the pivot points made to bolt right here on this leaf spring on my previous versions, but I just took that piece that I had made and then I welded it straight to a piece of two inch flat bar that was bridging the top of this. So overall, I think that about explains it. Really not too terribly complicated, just a little bit of time. One other thing we need to do is we need to keep the spring from coming out of this, because obviously when you jump, you compress the springs and the springs push you back up, but inertia is gonna wanna keep this behind and they might slide down your spring and that could be bad. Could break a lot of things, including you. So uh, this is something that's slightly important to pay attention to. I drilled a hole through the metal, obviously, and then a hole through the fiberglass leaf spring just for a 3 8 inch bolt, and that 3 8 inch bolt need to be kept loose. So put it through there, obviously through the spring throughout the other side, put a good washer between it, the head of the bolt, and the spring, but don't snug it down all the way. You want a little bit of movement so that uh, it can transfer the energy into compressing that rubber instead of twisting and torquing that bolt, which could also break your leaf spring. So don't tighten that up all the way, just get it almost snug. Now we have a connecting rod. This of course is what gives you control over the spring. So this attaches to a pivot point there and it's just a piece of one inch by one inch by eighth inch square tubing with some one inch by three sixteenths inch flat bar with three eighths inch holes drilled that will slip right over that and correspondingly right over the bottom of your foot plate. Now there's a pivot point here located about three quarters of the way down your foot because that's where a lot of the weight's gonna be pressed uh, right on the ball of your foot where you'd step. So to make it comfortable and also <laughs> not tippy because you want your point of balance to be similar to walking so it's easy to use and it's not trying to throw you forward or backward, hopefully that makes sense. You want this right about there where most of your weight's gonna be. But moving on to this piece now, now this is your interaction between the spring and your body. This is your, your control surface, if you will. And this is made just out of one inch by one inch square tubing, mostly, including all of this up here. And what, is, what was done is this continued all the way up to here where it was cut at an angle. And then I took that angle, put it on the bottom as a support for another piece of one by one, uh, by one actually, piece of square inch tubing. So it's just a cube that sticks right out and that gives us plenty of space to mount this bracket, which as I said, was made from 3 16 inch flat bar. And then you've got a Y coming up here and you have to have something rigid going over the front of your shin while you're wearing these so you have enough control. If you've ever worn these, you can feel a ton of pressure here so you know just how important this is. Not only from keeping your leg going this way, but from side to side. You could really, really break a leg easily on these, so this is an important step. And all I did was I took a piece of 3 8 inch all thread, bent it around in a U shape, and then padded the heck out of it. I used pipe insulation at first, and then that broke down. And then I have a bunch of very soft cloth wrapped around this with some duct tape. Uh, you could probably do a better job, but this works for what I need. And for adjustment, because you have to tighten it up against your leg, I've just got some 3 8 inch wing nuts on the back, and then of course there are holes drilled here, and I put some furniture pegs, uh, furniture, plastic furniture tips, I believe is what they're called, down into here, just to clean it up, because we don't want any sharp edges around our legs, especially if we fall, or I should say when we fall. Moving on down, the one inch tubing goes down here, and then to try to minimize weight on the initial model, because these legs are recycled from that, what I did was I cut this, you can see the weld seam here, up at an angle and then all the way over. So this is just half of a piece of one inch by one inch square tubing. 
Then I took a piece of one inch flat bar, welded across that as a brace, and that worked well for the initial design, but because I was sacrificing a little bit of weight in my fiberglass leaf springs, of course I was adding some here, but regardless, I decided to reinforce this part. So I just took a piece of one inch and basically I got right back to where I was with a piece of one inch by one inch square tubing. So you could probably just continue that uh, all the way down if you wanted to, but I wanted some looks, so that's why I did that. Then of course, this is not gonna be strong enough to hold your weight as is. This bending force is gonna be way too much for any joint you can make here. And so as an attempt to support it, I cut some one inch pieces of four inch channel and I braced them across here, which also gave us a attachment point for our straps. Now to hold these on, because they're gonna be taking so much weight, these are nylon straps, and I Gorilla glued them in place and then made these steel plates and hop riveted them together, so those aren't going anywhere. And if you're curious about what kind of buckles I'm using, these are my uh, go-to for these. They're a little flimsy, but I've never had an issue with them before. If you can find something a little more heavy, I would recommend that, but make sure that they're infinitely adjustable. Ignore my sewing. And this is just some seatbelt material. And then here we've just got something to keep your heel in place from sliding back and forth because this isn't enough. And you need something to contact it here and here so you don't just ride on a rail really that would allow your foot to roll back and forth. So that's a support that's been plenty strong so far. Now I chose to do a little bit of decoration with the end of the foot plate here, but all it is is actually a piece cut from a truck frame. Now this is really not necessary. You just need something to put your toe on really. A bit of two inch flat bar welded right across with a support would have been more than enough. So that's, that's really all there is to it. I hope, I think. <laughs> all right, and if you're curious about how this toe strap goes on, it's just like this. I lace it up around this bar and it fits nicely with a good solid base, wide enough to go all the way around your toe and then you strap that across your toe. Now toe control is very important and so that's really our three main points of contact. You've got one over your toe, one over your ankle, holding it down to this crook. And then of course you've got your shin bar up here. Okay, now I'm gonna go over just a quick plus of having the fiberglass over the steel. One thing I noticed when using the steel for a prolonged amount of time is that they created a memory. You can see that they're not the shape that they used to be, and that's because when they compress every time, if you compress them too far, they don't completely return back to their original form. So this side ends up getting shorter, this side ends up stretching, and you end up with a bend. I tried to increase the spring by adding another layer there, which increased weight, and ugh, steel is not the way to go. Now that you know how they work, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section. I'm gonna throw them back together, throw them on, and have some fun. All right, before I finish strapping in, I do have to say one thing, and you knew it was coming. These are quite dangerous. I'm taking my responsibility and my life and my safety into my own hands and using these. They are not safe at all. If you even have a set of these commercially available, they are going to be quite dangerous still. So, so please do not try this at home. And if you do try it and hurt yourself, I cannot be held responsible. Sorry, I just had to say it. I have way better control. Ooh. Being eight, these are much lighter than the last version. I'm running, shall I? <laughs> Slow children. Not anymore. <laughs> Right, so that was a ton of fun. Hope you enjoyed this video. I don't really know what more I can show you on these. It's pretty straightforward. So someday, maybe, I'll take these out, take them along a, maybe a river walk or something. See what people think, maybe some trails. I think that'd be a lot of fun. So anyway, hope you really enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. If you learned anything, I'll consider this a win. All right, if you'd like to support me, what I do, if you want to see more of these crazy things, then please like, share, and comment. 
And don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more just like it. On another note, I just purchased a 3D printer the other day. Got here, put it all together. And so there's gonna be so much cool stuff in the future. So please, if you don't wanna miss it, don't forget to subscribe. Oh, and did I mention to subscribe? I don't think I did yet. Whew, no. I'm gonna have a heart attack, so I'm gonna end this video. Take care.